Hello, hello, I'm back. I hope everyone had a lovely holiday or maybe you didn't and that's okay too. Uh, but I wanted to come back and talk about part three of the tell-all for the other way. I know it's super late, um, so rather than like a full play-by-play -play detailed recap, I'm just gonna go over the main points. And this video format is kind of new. I wanted to try something new. It's gonna be more, well, I'm gonna call it potato and chill. And it's gonna be super laid back with minimal editing, just us hanging out, having a low key chill conversation. So let me know what you guys think at the end of the video. So let's get into the tell all. We're gonna start with Wayne and Holly. And I'm gonna be, if I'm looking down a lot, it's because I'm reading my notes because this episode aired a week ago and I don't remember anything. So thank God for my notes. So per Yush, Tim defended Wayne and he was not on Holly's side. I mean, is anybody shocked? No, he, whatever. That was expected. So backstage, Holly calls Wayne. Sorry, I don't know why I cry all the time. I'm sorry. <laughs> and she's breaking down. She's telling him she still wants to be with him, which came to me as a shock. And when she asks him if he still wants to be with her, he hesitates. Do you still want to be with me? Um... I, I just think we have a lot to work on. Holly apologizes for being super sensitive, which I found very interesting. Um, she said that she was putting way too much emotional baggage on him. And she even said that she wanted to go back to South Africa to make things work with him. Do you want to go back to South Africa? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I don't know what made her get to that conclusion because she hated being there. She's being a little Delulu and uh, I don't know, I guess misses him so much that she thinks they can make their marriage work. But I believe that they're not together. Every time I see her on a TikTok live, she looks, she doesn't look okay. All right, let's just leave it at that. Let's move on to Shekinah and Sarper. And her ex, Dan. Oh no. Who expressed his feelings He's about her act. just before she left for Turkey. Shekinah, did you and Dan date? Yeah, we did. Like, we weren't in a relationship. No, that, no. I, that's what I'm saying. We went on dates. Yeah, that didn't make, that doesn't make you my ex. I understand Shekinah's point of view. That doesn't necessarily mean that you guys had a relationship. It just means you went on three or four dates. So I get that. She was like, Sean, why do you keep calling him my ex? He's not my ex. We went on like three or four dates. I don't know if you guys remember, but he is the guy that we saw in the beginning of the season before she went to Turkey. I guess he still had a crush on her and he wanted to date her, but she rejected him. So he comes on through video call and Sarper is upset. Sarper, how do you feel about Dan being here today? Uneasy. I feel something in my stomach. I mean, I don't know. I, I can't describe. And Dan says that she's very beautiful and he doesn't like the way that Sarper constantly tries to change her. Like, he weighs her all the time. He wants her to hit a certain weight. He tells her how to do her makeup, how to do her hair, what to wear, what outfit. And he, you know, in that way, he's controlling. But I'm going to die on this hill. Shekinah likes being told what to do. And I'm telling you guys, she is not going to do what she doesn't want to do. We already saw that. She was about to leave his ass when he kept insisting that he wanted kids and she said no. So she kind of goes, yeah, exactly. I like serving my man. This is our relationship dynamics. She loves to serve. Yeah, it makes me happy to serve him. I think I understand what she means. I think she's just using the wrong word. Like she loves caring for her men. She likes doing things for him, making him comfortable, cooking and cleaning for him because... That's how she expresses her love for him. You know, the whole love languages, like acts of service. I feel like that's her and Sarper. Like there are people, both women and men, who enjoy that, who want to do things for their partner because not because they have to, not because it's their role, but because they want to. That's how they express that they love them. So Kalani asks Shekinah how she'd feel if her daughter were in this kind of relationship. And of course, Shekinah says, well, it'd be totally fine because her relationship with Sarper is absolutely healthy. And everyone's like, <gasps> oh my God, but I get it. I'm not on Shekinah's side. I just understand where they're coming from. It's a, it's a relationship dynamic that works for them. And it's not hurting anyone. It's not hurting Shekinah. It's not hurting Sarper. So let them be. And they revisit the 2500. Okay, this is the only time where she genuinely looks bothered. 
like whenever this number comes up of 2500 okay so everybody calculates the 2500 which i also did in the beginning of the season so basically if he slept with 2500 different women started having sex at 18 years old he would have had to have sex with a different woman every three to four days up until now and he's 40 something 42 can't remember that's a lot how do you even meet 2500 people i don't know um someone suggested that he may have had a lot of orgies and maybe he had like 10 sexual partners in one time and that's a possibility too um he we we don't get the details but we uh see the notebook that he saved that was so bizarre that he had this dusty crusty notebook and not only that but he made an x and color coded it. It was really weird. It wasn't even like a person with a name and their age and their occupation. Like they, he didn't humanize them. It was just an X that was color coded. Like hot, cute, ugly, you know? Oh, and at one point Shekinah was like, babe, can I tell you my number? And he's like, no, no, Shekinah, no, I refuse. So that's weird. She can't talk about her number, but he's always chanting the 2500. Oh my God. And they also talk about the bottle collection that he has. And I, I knew it. I knew each bottle represented, well, according to him, it represents a memory he had with a woman, each bottle. Do you know how many bottles there were? There were a lot. So they're basically effing trophies, like how serial killers keep something of their victims. What the fork? If I were Shekinah, I would make him throw those away. Sarper revealed that he had been hiding something from her and that was that notebook that I just mentioned some people are accusing him of making it up like one day he just found this old notebook and then started rubbing the pages together so it looks old and started marking all these x's no I believe it's real I believe he is that type of man to keep track and he's so proud of this number I don't think he'll ever get rid of that notebook. That notebook is incredibly cherished by him. And he feels like it's such a big deal that a guy like him, who was the F boy of all the F boys, changed his ways for her. And that is something that she should wear with pride. <laughs> Ew. Okay, let's move on to Brandon and Mary. We finally, finally talk about Brandon and Mary. First, they address Mary and Brandon's new baby, Midnight, and she also talks about how she had a very traumatizing delivery, and the way she described it sounded like she could have easily died from it. Um, I'm having a cord coil and... Umbilical cord was around the baby's neck. It was wrapped around three times, oh and Mary had a low-lying placenta. And I, I'm awake during my C-section, and I'm scared, my oxygen is lost, and they keep adding oxygen. That's so freaking scary. I am glad that she and Midnight are fine now. The trauma that women and their bodies have to go through. Ugh, so unfair. Anyway, um, Brandon's still playing video games, just not as much, whatever the hell that means. It probably still means he's fucking useless. He admits he gets lost in video games he can play for hours and hours and hours and hours and listen i know a lot of people play video games and that's fine even though i have ptsd from an ex who played video games for hours and hours and hours and hours but here's the thing okay let's just say i watch a lot of reality tv if that were the case then i would set an alarm he says that he can't help out with the baby because he just gets lost in his video games are you freaking kidding me? So he is playing his video games while Mary is in the other room, feeding the baby, changing the diapers, cleaning the house, doing the... No. And a huge freaking red flag to me is she's afraid to disrupt him while he's playing his video games because we already know that he gets really upset. We also learn that he calls her some names. Okay, th this was shocking. I was shook. I do sometimes call her a scammer, call her a bitch. M most of the time, if I get mad, I would just get, I call her a bitch. He calls her scammer and a bitch. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. No. I can't believe I thought he was a saint. I cannot believe I thought he was. And I remember feeling so bad for him. Like he was such... He was like the perfect boyfriend. I remember I was simping for him. And
And I remember at one point, I think Mary, hmm, I can't remember what it was exactly, but Mary did post something or no, the show did as well. They got audio because the first thing I noticed is we never see their fight scenes, which is very unusual. That means Brandon will not fight in front of the cameras. He is acting innocent in front of the cameras and letting Mary take all the heat that she's the crazy jealous one, which she is, but so is he. We're forgetting that he is an equal uh, uh, participant in this toxic relationship. So when I heard him raising his voice and yelling at her and swearing, I was shook. I just did not expect that at all. And then the fact that they're never on camera when they're arguing, that's also suspicious. And there's a video on Mary's TikTok, and this was filmed and posted way before the show aired, where she, um, I don't know if it's still on her TikTok account, but if it is, I'll post it. But she goes off video and his complete mood changes and he just he's not happy are you mad no i'm just overthinking because i can't see you why you can't see me because you turned off your camera you said so i just want to turn it off why because what it's because i want to no because you don't want me to see you i want to but i'm not pretty right now i'm mess right now you're not a mess I look so ugly right now. You want to see me ugly? I want to fucking see you. You're not ugly. Don't say that shit. You make me mad if you say that. Just eat your food. Why? You're not eating. So you won't eat food if I don't eat? Yes. I want a kiss. I want kiss. I want kiss. You're not fucking ugly. Turn on your camera. Kiss first. I did kiss you. Here we go. Turn on your camera. I'm sitting here with my eyes closed, trying to calm down, feel better, and get tired again. When will you lay down? Yeah, I want you to lay down. And I want you to sleep. But I can't sleep until you do. You didn't sleep, though. So you need to sleep. The fact that you're not sleeping is making you feel worse and preventing me from sleeping even more. Do you understand me? Okay, I'll sleep. I got chills down my spine watching that. It was just a different side of Brandon that I've never seen. I never expected. Like we know Mary's crazy. We know Mary's insecure. We know she cries. She plays victim. But Brandon was acting like he was this innocent, poor little puppy who's so innocent. He's not. Okay, he's not. He also has a very controlling side. And I think he has a very mean side. When he admitted that he calls her a bitch and a scammer, he doesn't even seem remorseful. He doesn't care. He's just like, yeah, sometimes I call her a scammer and I call her a bitch. And then to make it even worse, he said that he calls her that to help her. Not being submissive. I want her to stand up for herself. So you call her a bitch so she'll fight back? I just want her to kind of be like, don't call me that. I'm not a bitch or, you know, like I want to get that out of her. Red fucking flag red 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 flag he said he does it to help her defend herself because she's so quiet and so meek he wants her to be able to fight back and so he calls her names are you kidding um hello that's abusive to purposefully call someone something for a reaction that's pretty narcissistic there baby i do think brandon verbally abuses mary i do So Angela comes on, Brandon's mom, and she keeps telling them, you guys need therapy. You guys need therapy. But at the same time, I kind of got frustrated because like, how are they going to get therapy? Why won't you go? I'm just scared. Like, I will get judged. People will say I'm crazy or something. Okay, Mary doesn't want to go. Yeah, that is an issue. Then make Brandon go. Make your son go. How is therapy viewed in your culture, Mary? 
And this conversation was also very frustrating because none of them understood the cultural nuances of therapy. Like when Mary was talking about how therapy wasn't common and therapy was something like mental health just isn't discussed where she's from. TJ also said that. And I feel like someone else said that, but I can't remember who. And that whole conversation was just very frustrating. I just feel like nobody really understood what Mary felt in regards to therapy and how therapy and mental health are being handled in the Philippines. I just wish there was more empathy, I guess. So what do people do when they're struggling with their mental health? They suffer. They suffer. It's the same in Samoa. There's one therapist in the entire country. And if you go, you're insane. I understand that situation quite better. Philippines is quite close to India and this whole Asian continent. What happened is social pressure. If you're going to some for your, your mental balance or something, People judge you. When Mary's breaking down and she's crying when she's talking about how she's taking care of the baby, she's so tired that Brandon doesn't help her and she's crying. And you see Brandon consoling her, hugging her and kissing her. That just all feels performative to me now. I don't believe it. I feel like he's just doing it in front of the cameras. The difference between Mary and Brandon is when Mary watches her scenes back, right? She's remorseful. And she's regretful. She understands that she looks crazy, jealous. She regrets rage texting Brandon. She even admits, I regret it. I wish I didn't do it. Like she feels embarrassed and she regrets it. But Brandon, I don't get any of that vibe from him. Um, Watching that makes me feel like I'm really crazy way back. And I feel bad about myself. I hate myself. Angela, you look like you could not contain yourself. What were you thinking? No, oh, I'm pissed. <laughs> I, I know, you know, everyone's like, how could he call her that? But what you just saw, <laughs> how could you not? <laughs> when Angela, Brandon's mom, came on stage to talk about the fight they had, Brandon and Mary, uh, while he was watching TV and had the volume on super loud, And Mary was way too scared to ask him to turn it down because she, like, every time she does that, he gets mad and then he starts calling her names and starts yelling at her. So what she did was she confided in his mom and told her what was going on. And then Mary texted the mom again a few minutes later saying that Mary ended up telling him to lower the volume and then Brandon got mad and he stormed outside. Then Angela called Brandon and asked him what the heck was going on and why are you being so cranky? And basically he was like, I'm not mad. I'm fine. I'm just outside listening to music. And Angela heard that as, oh my God, he's totally not mad. Mary's just over-exaggerating and being a drama queen. Like they just have communication problems. He wasn't upset. So instead of just turning it down, he turned it off and went outside to listen to music on his phone. He wasn't upset at all. But to me... My immediate thought was uh, he was definitely mad. Like who turns off the TV when they're asked to turn down the volume? Like I just imagined him throwing a fit. And then when Mary said her part, that's exactly how she said happened. According to her, he slammed the remote down and went outside. I feel like it doesn't really take a genius to figure that out. Um, I don't know why Tiny Tim was rolling his eyes. I can only assume that it was towards Mary. He probably thinks she's a liar and a drama queen. Shocker. Also, let us not forget, Brandon's mom has acknowledged that he has a temper or an anger problem. She has acknowledged that. She said that that was something that he could definitely work on. Also, do you guys remember that they had this same argument on the show? Like the episode that I was talking about where they didn't have the footage and it was just the audio. So I wonder if it was the same fight or if this is a fight that they have often. I personally think Brandon is a lot smarter and more strategic than we give him credit for. I mean, I truly thought he was an innocent angel um, and a nice guy, but he clearly also has his faults. I'm not saying that Mary is, you know, this absolves Mary of everything that she did. I'm just saying that everybody is so quick to hate Mary and blame her for everything and not Brandon. It's just not fair. I've seen more couples than I can count stories. She is the most controlling female I've ever seen. Oh, and why did Tim say that she was the most controlling person that we've ever seen on TV? Are you kidding me? Has he not seen Angela and Michael? How is Mary worse than Angela? Uh Uh-uh. No. Okay, last and very least... 
Danielle and Johan. They bring in a woman through video call named Memory. And first of all, who names a child Memory? She said that Johan reached out to her, asked her for her pictures, and told her to visit him in the Dominican Republic. Blah, blah. Uh, honestly, I kind of tuned this part out because it's it's not like we already don't know that he's a hoe. He admitted that he was a hoe. Wait, did he not? Ad- no, he didn't admit that he was a hoe, but Danielle came with receipts that he was a hoe. Um, Johan's dying on the hill that he did not cheat on Danielle. And then he says, but I should have. <laughs> okay. A bunch of women reached out to Danielle to tell her that he was reaching out to all these women and try to convince them to come to the Dominican Republic so that they can hook up. So he's a hoe, for sure. He denies everything, deny, deny, deny. Nope, 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 never did it, but I should (laughs) have. That is uh, all I'm gonna talk about, yeah. I'm just going through my notes to see if I missed anything. I did, but I I just don't wanna talk about it. I I don't want to, okay, okay. All right, I love you guys. I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.